Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today played 11 seasons in the NBA, spending the majority of his time with the Rockets and the Clippers. Katina Mobley, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I heard this crazy story that um, Michelle Obama recently just got her family tree kind of analyzed, and mm -hmm. it turns out that you're a distant cousin of hers. Yeah, Is this yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Did she contact yeah. you about this? Have no, you reached she hasn't hit me yet. She hasn't me yet. But I have some famous cousins. Uh, oh. Joe Lewis, the boxer. Okay. Uh, John Mobley, Denver Broncos linebacker. Yep. So uh, I guess, uh, you know. So something in the blood with your family. We're a special family. group, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> have, have you wanted to reach out to her at all? Were you surprised by this? I was surprised. I was surprised. Okay. But, um, and then again, yeah, me and Bradley not surprised, right? We all come from one. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're connected in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So for a guy that had a lot of success in the NBA, it's interesting to me, you actually didn't even start on the team until you were like in a senior, right? Yeah. In, in high school? Yeah, senior high school. What, yeah. You just caught on to basketball later in life? Yeah, I was a boxer in football. My dad had me boxing and then playing football. Yeah. And then uh, my senior year in high school was my first year starting varsity basketball. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of a late bloomer. I picked up a basketball at 13. So I, c I couldn't even walk and chew gum at the same time as far as basketball. Football yeah. was, you know, I did my thing in football and in box. My dad had me doing that as survival, being from Philadelphia. But uh, basketball was like a burning love I had uh, in my stomach. Uh, you know, kind of like that when you're hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like kind of like that. So you wound up then going to the University of Rhode Island mm -hmm. and your roommate was Lamar Odom. Yes, he was. Tell me everything about being roommates with Lamar. <laughs> Tell me everything. Everything. <laughs> Lamar is, uh, he's something else. Lamar, we actually had two beds and we put the beds together. So we shared a room. It was mm. three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tyson Wheeler, Antonio Reynolds Dean was our big man. And uh, it was Lamar and I shared a room mm -hmm. and put the beds together to be able to head toe, head toe kind of thing. You didn't um, want to have your separate beds? Well, no, it's the room was so small. Oh, so that's small. the only thing you could do is put them oh, together really? so you can have more Got it. Oh, space, space in the room. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And um, I mean, he would just go, he'd disappear. Like he was junky, he, candy everywhere. Skittles and all types of stuff everywhere. But no, Lamar was great. Like um, practice, different things like that, you know? He yeah. Was great. Okay. He just released a book and there's a lot of a lot of different stories mm -hmm. that, that are coming out. Are you guys still close? We are. I saw him in Vegas. I saw Lamar in Vegas. He looked uh, he looked well. Mm -hmm. He was uh, super busy. We sat, we talked for a second, and it seemed like he was, uh, you know, his mind was so busy. And I think it was because of his book, and he had to do traveling or whatever with the book. And I guess being in the limelight again of, like, basketball and his peers, I think that's what, um, you know, he was more busy about. It. Will guys accept him and stuff like that? But, I mean, I, I love him. Uh, he's, he's great. Uh, his, his spirit's amazing. You know, he's a good dude. In 2008, then, you were drafted by the Rockets. So the guys that you were playing with right away... Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Scottie Pippen, which is quite a lineup, especially when you're a rookie. Mm -hmm. Do you remember back then? Like, were you intimidated by them? Were you just excited to learn from them? So funny. So when I was in high school, I had my wallet. I would have, like, uh, two basketball uh, players' mm -hmm. uh, card, basketball cards. And it was Scottie Pippen, and it was Eddie Jones. And I knew Eddie Jones because he played for Temple University. And then Scottie Pippen is just being like a god, like somebody like, oh my god, I can't believe, you know, this is Scottie Pippen kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Never thought I would meet him. So I get drafted. <laughs> I get drafted by Houston. And who's on my team? Charles Barkley, Scottie Pippen, Akeem Olajuwon. So, I mean, I'm, it's surreal to me. Yeah. And I'm, more, I'm a spiritual person, so it's mm -hmm. like the universe is lined up. And I guess the manifestation of, like, having Scottie's basketball card in my wallet it was just an amazing thing for me and um you know uh having those guys I guess helped me jump from my experience wise faster you yeah know? because Scotty had me every single morning and after practice like just from watching tape to doing this to doing that like it was just great yeah do you feel like playing with those guys so early on kind of shaped your career differently than had you wound up on a different team for a fact for a fact and I just mm -hmm. it's just like Dirk Nowinski with uh, Donnie Nelson or Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker with Greg Popovich like Rudy Tomjanovich 
um, um, Scotty, Charles, for me, helped me become a pro because I watched what to do and what not to do. Okay. You know, and that was, it was, that was a blessing for, for, you know, to have those guys. And you know, I could have been anywhere else and maybe never played or got cut. You never just know. You never know. Back in that time, it was so different. You guys could go out and do whatever you wanted, and there weren't camera Ugh, phones everywhere. Ridiculous. And now, I mean, guys are getting caught doing everything. So you got to be really careful. Guys can't go out as much. Back then, how much fun did you have? <laughs> For real? Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah? We had a lot what of fun. What was the nightlife like? Nightlife was, uh, to me, it's, you know how you think about this. It was Scottie Pippen, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. and I was their rookie that they let go with them. Yeah. So for me, I'm just like taking it all in. It was like a, it was a rock show every time. So if Scottie go out or Michael go out and Charles, and they always go out together. Hard well, to miss too. Yeah, it's hard to miss those guys. Mm -hmm. But they were always good to people. They yeah. were always conversating, and they were all. They were very inviting when it came to like letting me understand how to conduct myself. Oh. They weren't, um, you know, Charles might have gotten into a couple of different situations, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, and he was more so about a moral and principle, like, mm -hmm. you know, respect me and my surroundings. You know, if you're, you're at a, a restaurant uh, and, and, you, and somebody comes up to you and, you know, um, it's okay to come up but while I'm eating, no, or whatever it is. If I'm standing up with friends, cool. I learned how to conduct myself with them or what not to do. Like Charles a little more flippy when it comes to like, don't be rude. Right. Scotty was just cool. Like every, everybody was cool. And Akeem Olajuwon, he just, he never went out. He just never went he out. He didn't go out? No, he never went out. Okay. Yeah, he just, he, he sat on a plane, he would study. He was just, you know, very to himself. You had the game-winning shot, too, in the first game that you actually played in your NBA career. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's Do you crazy. remember vividly still so that So the moment? very first game, we played the Lakers. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't even, very first game we played the Lakers, we didn't even, uh, I didn't even play. So yeah. I'm, laying on the, I'm laying on the floor, and I'm just like this rookie. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there like, wow, it's a, it's a lot of celebrities in here, you know? <laughs> like, I'm in the forum, you know, uh, playing the Lakers not thinking, I'm not thinking anything, I'm just enjoying it. So at the end of the game, Charles Barkley, close game, in the game, Charles Barkley passes the ball to me at the top of the key, and I shoot a three and I make it. Now, I don't even feel anything, I'm numb. And everybody comes over to me and like kind of picks me up or whatever like that, and I'm like, all right, I made it, okay, cool. Like, but I'm sitting my, and to myself, I'm like, did I just do that? Like, I don't even know what's really going on. So Charles says after the game, of course, like he always does, he goes, he goes, is it Char the reporter says, Charles, did you know you were passing to the rookie? He's like, oh, if I knew, that was th if I knew it was this dummy, then I wouldn't <laughs> pass it to him. So I'm like, oh, okay, okay, cool. But again, I didn't care. Like, I just, I was happy to be in the NBA. I was sure. happy to be, like, just a part of, like, something big because I'm, I'm dealing with, like, top 50 players. Yeah. And for him to pass the ball to me at that time, like, I just the story of my career, I guess. Okay. More with Katina Mobley when we come back. Check out our YouTube channel, Fair Game, on FS1 to catch all the best highlights of our show. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.